Hi, my name's Doug, and I want to show you the future. I'm here at the Envisioning Lab on the Microsoft campus. This is where guests can come and get a look at what the near future will look like in their homes and offices. It's also where part of the office envisioning video was shot. All what you see is based on explorations of technology, which means the envisioning team in office, the folks behind this video, poured over reams and reams of research. Now, besides being just cool, what I like about this video is I can see the dots connecting these future concepts with today's technology. So let's go find some real offices and computers, and let me show you the today behind tomorrow. It was only 25 years ago that businesses kept their records in ledgers like these. Programs like Excel and the Internet allow for a lot more data to be stored and recalled. The digital universe, that's about 800,000 petabytes, that's 800 million gigabytes. In other words, take a DVD storage disk, now stack them to the moon, bring them back, that's what we're talking about. That's a lot of data. Excel used to have about 65,000 rows, and customers needed more, so newer versions have a million rows. And guess what? Sometimes a million rows isn't even enough. And that's where PowerPivot can come in. PowerPivot is a free download for Excel. You can link up various spreadsheets or even with a database. So we're talking millions of rows of data. I'm using Excel 2010 here, and I'm using the slicer. So what I can do is click on data, like here for each salesperson, and I can get instantaneously, I can get some results. I don't have to look at all the data. PowerPivot can handle the millions of rows of data for me. The envisioning team shows us the same concept. Spreadsheets are not seen. It's the graphical representation of numbers that are manipulated to make decisions. We call that data visualization. Research shows us the visual representation of data allow you to see patterns and outliers much more easily. You may have seen this. It's called tagging. I have a tag on the back of my business card. You scan it with a smartphone, and then the phone shows the office blog. Now, in a cafeteria, this tag could tell me ingredients, or today's special, or give me a discount. Let's take it a step further. This can become my own personal sign. Let's say I'm in a foreign country. The tag can translate information in English, or remind me of dietary information, like, yeah, I'm allergic to cupcakes. Now, in the envisioning video, this tagging takes place naturally. The technology knows what it needs to deliver. Welcome to Johannesburg International Airport. Please approach the road to create your pickup zone. At work, you're just not at your desk. You're out and about, you're getting a drink, you're bumping into people. Now, these impromptu meetings are important. Research has shown that's where some of the best business ideas come from. And architects are starting to build more open spaces in buildings for these impromptu meetings. The envisioning folks call that natural collaboration. Now, Outlook, that's strictly business, right? You have your email, your meetings, your tasks. But with a new tool, the Outlook Social Connector, I can get a lot more. Let me show you. Here's an email from my manager, Jonathan. And you can see here, I can see all his, the emails that I've received from him and all the meetings I've had with him. But look, I also get a mashup of social information. Here's something about the World Cup. And, and look, he's made a, a LinkedIn update. Now, if that's too much information, I can turn off certain feeds. But just think of what we do on social media now. We're sharing business articles. Uh, your next uh, coworker is, is my client, and we can talk that way. You can do a lot. You can get a lot with this mix of social and business with the Outlook Social Connector. In the future, this natural collaboration has people working together in a virtual workspace, editing content together. Computing in the cloud. That makes your information go from device to device to space to space. Now, the cloud, well, that's the internet, and we're using it a lot already. Think about it. You're putting pictures online and sharing them with friends. You're doing your banking online. You're storing your music online. And we have tools to give your own personal cloud, and one of them is SkyDrive. Now, that's free, and it comes with 25 gigabytes of storage, plus you can use the online web apps. That's online companions of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote. Let me show you how it works. So I have an Excel document here, and I need my coworker, Charlotte, to review it. Uh, the thing is, Charlotte's not here. She got to go to the big conference. But it doesn't matter because I'm going to use SkyDrive. Or you could use SharePoint or Office 365 if your businesses have those. So I'm going to send permission to Charlotte to work on this document together. 
and then she can work on it on any computer that's connected to the internet. Oh look, Charlotte's making changes. She's, she's probably in that ritzy hotel on some public computer. So she goes in, she makes changes right in the web app. Okay, and then I'm gonna make changes. And look, we're correcting the document together. Way to go, Charlotte. What the envisioning team shows us is how the cloud enables us to work across multiple devices. The guest uses the hotel devices as if they were her own. At home, a kitchen helps with the chosen recipe. So to me, the future looks bright. And hopefully now you can see how these future technologies are starting to work today. If you want to see the Office Envisioning video, simply go to office.com slash vision. Or go to the Office blog. I'll have the links to the tools of now that I showed you today. Um, am, am, I, am I missing something? What, what, uh, do you, do you want, you want me over here? Okay. Is that okay? Okay. okay. Find more at office.com.